How's it going guys? It's Jiggy here and in this video I'm going to be taking you through the A-level topic of big data and this is going to provide you with an introduction to a really exciting area of how computer science is used in everyday life. In this introductory video the aim is to be able to understand three keywords relating to big data and they're known as the three V's volume, velocity and variety. First though let's roughly define big data which is just the generic term for a large and or complicated data set that can't be stored or analyzed in a normal way. Now bear in mind that big data is a catch-all term and you'll never get a precise quantitative definition for it, which is why we talk about it in terms of the three V's. Let's focus on volume first, since it makes big data, well, big. The size of available data has been growing at an increasing rate on both a personal and organizational level. Not only is more data being generated, it's also coming from more sources. Big is obviously a relative term, and to reiterate, there's no numeric definition of how big a data set has to be in order to fall under the term big data. Really though, the definition can be applied as soon as you have to spread your data management to lots of servers or machines because the volume of data is so vast. When you do this, you start to get problems since a common way of storing data is with relational databases, and these don't really scale that well across multiple machines. Think of London's tube network as an example. If Transport for London wanted to analyse the types of journeys people make, they're going to need to analyse the 20 million oyster taps that happen every single day. Of course you can appreciate that is a huge amount of data. Think about the data that you could store alongside one single oyster tap. And this data could be the station, the time of day, how much money's on the card, how regularly the card is used, and so on and so forth. And there's no way that one server could handle all of this data. Nowadays, people can use their phones and bank cards instead of the standard Oyster card. So you can appreciate that this data is now coming from yet more sources, which have to be treated in a different way. Our second keyword is velocity, which relates to the speed at which data flows. For big data, this is usually rapid and continuous and would overload normal systems. Not only is velocity related to the speed of data generation, it's also to do with users wanting the data in almost real time. Let's say for example that you're plowing loads of money into a huge marketing campaign and you want to be able to analyse people's reactions to it on social media. You're going to need to monitor millions of tweets and posts concurrently in real time so that you could pinpoint exactly the parts of the event that people react most positively to. Now this is an example of both the extremely high velocity at which the data is generated, since you're going to have tweets and posts coming in thick and fast, as well as the extreme velocity the data needs to be received at in order for it to be analysed effectively. The third V is variety. Normal databases assume that the data set will fall neatly into rows and columns, which gives you a well-defined structure for your data. You can then work with this nicely defined structure in order to do the analysis that you want. As you should have probably anticipated, big data tends to be at least partially unstructured, meaning that it doesn't fit nicely into our usual database structures. So when we say that big data sets tend to have a lot of variety, we mean that the data is, isn't all of the same type and may be hard to classify. For example, if you had a system to forecast weather, you're going to have data that comes from many different sources, such as humidity sensors, thermometers, barometers, etc, etc. All of these measure in different units and will need to be dealt with in different ways. The result of this is that you can't structure it in a normal way, and this lack of structure makes it difficult to analyse it. In order to extract patterns from the data, you may need to apply machine learning techniques. This is a type of artificial intelligence that can discern patterns without explicitly being programmed to do so. Let me just clarify before we go further with this topic. Big data is a generic term that is really applied as soon as you start to encounter difficulty when collecting and analysing a data set. A combination of the three V's is what leads you to not being able to use regular data containers, such as one server hosting a relational database. The actual term makes it easy to get sidetracked with volume, since you have big in big data, but the variety is really the most challenging aspect. A small but completely random data set would still be challenging to analyse, and therefore would probably be called big data, regardless of volume not being the dominant factor. So that's it for the big data topic. Hopefully you've not found it too bad, though it's probably one of the more trickier topics, simply because it ties into something called functional programming. 
Let's have a quick recap of the three Vs. We have volume, which is to do with vast amount of data. We have velocity, where data is generated and received quickly. And finally, we have variety, where we'll have different types of mostly unstructured data. Thank you for watching.